This is a car antenna. They're near ubiquitous and come in a variety of shapes and styles. They're stubby, shark fin, and some are even hidden in the windshield. But for ones like this one, a tall whip antenna, why is there a coil of wire wrapped around them? The seemingly obvious answer would be that the wire is the antenna. The body is non-conductive, made of something like fiberglass or plastic, and the wire wrapped around is the actual antenna. For some cheap ones like this, that is the case, but not for this one, or for this one I have here. If you take a look, you can see the wire never connects fully to the base, and the antenna itself is metal. So the wire wrapped around isn't for picking up a signal. What's really going on is a lot more interesting and has more to do with the Burj Khalifa and Galloping Gertie than getting a stronger signal from your local NPR affiliate. Let's take a minute to think of where this antenna is going to be on top of a car traveling 60 plus miles an hour. That's at least a tropical cyclone's worth of wind. That can and will blow and toss around anything not secured. It can also just be annoying. Think of the whistling sound you get when a window is cracked just a smidge. To get an idea of what wind can do, let's take the effects to the absolute extreme. In 1940, the Tacoma Tacomaneras Bridge was constructed and not so affectionately known as Galloping Gertie. Being built in the Tacomanera Strait of Puget Sound between Kitsap Peninsula and Tacoma, it had a fairly consistent wind hitting it broadside. In the same year construction was finished, not less than five months after opening, it collapsed because it was oscillating and twisting so much. This was all because of the wind, aeroelastic flutter, and vortex shedding. In structures like bridges, buildings, chimneys, or anything that really they gets exposed to high winds, there is a possibility of this fluttering. What's happening is after a certain speed, a vortex will begin forming on one side, then falling off, and a new one forming on the opposite side. This repeats over and over, creating a periodic oscillation. If this happens at the harmonic frequency of the structure, it becomes dangerous. Think kicking your feet on a swing. If you time it right, you can start getting quite a bit of motion but the timing of those kicks is very important. If you just start kicking randomly, nothing really happens. And while not a lot of energy individually per kick or per vortex, when that timing is right, it can build up a lot of motion. In the right or wrong situation, as it were, this can cause a lot of damage. So much so on complex structures like buildings or bridges, extensive modeling from computational fluid dynamics to wind tunnels are used to ensure that these fluttering movements are properly dampened and disrupted, otherwise they can collapse. So how do massive structures combat this? There are active measures like the tuned mass dampers used in buildings like Taipei 101, but the Burj Khalifa uses a passive design. It's in fact quite ingenious. The building spirals up in steps to disrupt the wind unevenly across its height. Going back to the swing analogy, this would be kind of like kicking each of your legs at different times. You're imparting just as much energy, but not going anywhere. This idea of spirals to disrupt vortices isn't exactly new. In 1957, Christopher Scruton at the National Physics Laboratory in Great Britain was able to show these things called helical strikes are incredibly effective at disrupting vortices and keeping large structures like smokestacks from shaking themselves to bits. So in lots of these ventilation stacks, you'll find these fins called helical or Scruton strikes. Now there are trade-offs in using these. They increase the wind load and you can't use these strakes on tight clusters of structures as they can interfere with each other. But they are a very simple way of controlling for aeroelastic flutter induced oscillations. Now with all this talk of spirals, I think you see where this is going. But first, to better visualize what some of those effects look like, I made this fluid tunnel. It has a rheoscopic fluid, which is just water and mica, that goes through these grids, making a section of laminar flow to see the vortices and flow that occur when a structure is put in the stream. So let's use this to simulate a round antenna. We see as the fluid flows, it begins to form those alternating vortices. These vortices going back and forth can start creating that unwanted oscillation we were talking about. But this fluid tunnel can't show how well a helical strike works because this demonstration in particular is closer to two-dimensional. So to visualize how well a spiral of wire works, we can use something else you might have encountered, swinging a stick underwater. If you've ever done this, you might have noticed as it moves, there's a buzzing thing that starts happening once it really gets going. With that in mind, we can see this in action, how well a helical strike works to reduce that buzzing if we take a stop in the bathtub. This video here shows the antenna without the wire wrapped around it. You notice it starts buzzing and vibrating. Now, this video is another identical version of the antenna with the wire wrapped around it left intact. You'll notice it has almost no vibration. You can really see the difference if you watch the video side by side and compare them. Of course, the strikes aren't nearly as high on a car antenna as on a building. This buzzing is more of a nuisance than anything else, but eliminating it does help make the vehicle quieter, something that's incredibly important to newer models and with a relatively low cost to boot. 
So to sum it up, the wind is a fluid and as it blows it has massive potential for damage. Harmonic motion can add up causing anything from a little extra buzzing to complete destruction. Simple mitigations can reduce that motion, meaning if you see a spiral on a smokestack or an antenna, it's there to keep things just that much more stable. Now I really enjoyed making this and hope you found this interesting. I had seen these spiral antennas and spiral smokestacks and always wondered if they were related and as it turns out they are. You can check out Real Engineering's video on the Burj Khalifa here and my other video here if you like little electronic and microcontroller projects. And if all goes to plan I have a few other ideas that hopefully you'll find just as fascinating that I'll put out later. Take care. I didn't say that. That's not what I wrote. I didn't write that. Mm. Oh, that goes through these grids. Instead of, instead of flows, as it goes. Inner flow. To see these. Guanana. Took. Took.